Hello and welcome back to the channel. Uh, this message is for the daughters of Zion, so-called black woman. It's a part of the Family Life series. Um, it's a very important message, especially to those who are unmarried, uh, those who are looking to enter into a rock solid relationship. It's very important that you listen to this message and understand some things. It's unfortunate that we are seeing a rise in situations where the daughters of Zion are making bad choices, really bad choices, in terms of who they pair up with, who they have children with, who they marry, who they lie down with. There are things that need to be considered before you even deal with anyone, especially someone who is going to be your husband or the father of your children, your mate, you have to first consider the spiritual ramifications before entering into any relationship. <clears throat> it's unfortunate that most people don't even consider that when they are looking at a potential mate, much less marrying a potential mate. Now, when I say the spiritual ram ramifications, I'm not talking about someone who just took a quick glimpse at someone and made a determination based on the fact that someone uh, goes to a church or they are a part of an assembly or they carry the Bible around or they say God's name as the world calls them from time to time. When I say spiritual ramifications, I mean, have you prayed about this man and made a determination that this man is righteous? You see, a lot of people determine righteousness based on some of the things that I, list, I listed or I named, such as going to church or carrying around a Bible, quoting scripture. <clears throat> Sorry for clearing my throat. It is a must <laughs> that I clear it so that I can continue on. But anyways, I want to give you some pointers, those of you who are unmarried, seeking to be married, those of you who are young, of course, those of you who already know this, uh, you can listen to the message, but I'm certainly talking to those who have no understanding of what they are getting to and how very serious a relationship is. It's not just about, oh, he's handsome, or he looks good, or he's um, a good provider. It's not just about those things. It's far more at stake than just those things. So right up front, I am going to alert you as to the, the kind of man that you definitely want to leave, among, leave alone. Leave this kind of man alone. Get far away from him if, <clears throat> if he does not love the Most High, our Creator. Now, let me say this again. I said, leave this kind of man alone and get far away from him if he does not love the Most High, if it is not obvious to you that he loves the Most High. And so let me bring some more clarification to that statement. Don't base, this is why I say spiritual ramifications are not considered, okay? You must seek the Most High to get a greater understanding of what I'm saying here because it is unfortunate that many times a woman will make the determination that someone loves the Most High just based on them being nothing other than religious. Leave a religious man alone. Leave a religious man alone because that is not the method. That is not what the Most High would have you to do. The Most High would not have you to marry someone or deal with someone simply because they are religious. Religious does not mean that you love the Most High. <clears throat> Do I need to say that again for the people in the back? Just because a man or a woman is religious does not mean that they love the Most High. If it is not obvious to you that this man loves the Most High, Leave him alone. Leave that kind of man alone and get far away from him. Because a lot of women 
are caught up in situations right now to where they re they have many, many regrets. And of course, there are levels of situations that women get involved in. And of course, this same message can be said to men. But in this video, I am going to focus on women. Okay, I'm going to focus on women. I have sons too. So trust and believe that our sons know and understand the kind of women that they need to deal with, that they need to seek after, that they need to marry. But this message right here is, is for the daughters of Zion because women have far more to lose than a man. Now, please don't flood my comment section, men. Please don't flood my comment section saying that that's not true, that men have far more to lose. <clears throat> It's not a tit for a tat. It's not a competition. Some things are just obvious. And the, one of the greatest examples I can give is the fact that a woman is the one who carries the child around. A man, he can drop that seed and he can vanish and never see that woman or that child ever again. And so she is left holding the bag I have to call it a bag in this situation because there is an epidemic in the black community where the woman is left holding the bag. And you have men, you have men who are literally taunting women because of this. <clears throat> so absolutely a woman has far more to lose if she makes the wrong choice. So if you get involved with a man who doesn't love the most high or it's not obvious that he loves the most high there is no telling what you could experience now i want to say this i have to say this because sometimes people uh they will say things like well i already know this we already know this and blah blah this and blah blah that we are instructed to teach the younger generations period we are instructed to teach them and some of them don't know some of them never had anyone sit them down and talk to them and tell them what to expect, what to look for, what to do, how to handle themselves. And so that is what I am doing here. I get messages many times from the daughters of Zion who have gone through so many traumatic experiences that they are left devastated after being involved in a relationship that went all the way left. <clears throat> and when I say devastated, I'm not just talking about a woman who got pregnant by a man and he walked away and he went to be with someone else. Of course, that's devastating for some, but I'm talking about devastation far above that, far beyond that. So it is devastating what I just described about women who have been left hurting broken but there are some women who are left hurting broken destroyed leveled to the ground because of a relationship with a man that they should have never been involved with in the first place do not mistake a man's religious attitude carrying around of the bible being a part of an assembly or a church. Don't mistake that for being a man who loves the Most High. If it is not obvious to you and everyone else that this man loves the Most High, leave that person alone. If it is not obvious that they love the Most High, leave them alone. And y'all know what I'm talking about. Sometimes people want to try to pretend like they don't understand what you are saying. They want to try to pretend like they don't know what you're talking about. Don't allow someone to trick you because they are quoting Bible scripture. Don't allow someone to deceive you because they are a part of an assembly, because they are a pastor or a minister or a leader or a teacher or a preacher or an apostle or a part of some camp, a part of some assembly of men who all dress alike. And they scream scripture day and night. If you believe that that's how you measure someone's love for the Most High, then this is why you are entering into these situations that leave you devastated. 
I have been I've been seeing so many things over the years that it will cause your mind to just pause for a moment. It will cause you to pause and pray absolutely for the daughters of Zion that they will get their heads on right that they will walk in spirituality instead of carnality. See, because the carnal mind is enmity against the Most High. The carnal mind is the Most High's enemy because the carnal mind will look at a man and make a determination based on simple words that come out of his mouth. A carnal mind cannot discern spiritual things. A carnal mind won't even pay attention to obvious red flags that are right there to show you that you don't need to go down that road with that man. The carnal mind says, I am more interested in having someone to lay in bed with, someone to rub up against my thighs, someone to whisper sweet nothings into my ear. Let me say that again, sweet nothings, sweet nothings. They ain't saying nothing, but it was enough for you to lure you into this carnal relationship that lacks spirituality, that lacks any type of discernment, that lacks any type of power. Because you were thinking with a carnal mind and not a spiritual mind. See, right now things might seem good because again, you have someone to rub up against your thighs. There's more to a relationship than that. There's more to it. If that's where your focus is, you want someone to lay next to, someone to get up with in the morning. See, what you don't understand, the way the game is played is this. That part of the relationship comes easy to most men. Of course, they will lay up against you for a season. Give you that feel-good moment for a season, but then it vanishes away. When you are dealing with a man who does not love and reverence the Most High, our Creator. It vanishes away. If you are dealing with a man who does not fear the Most High, our Creator. See, because, get this, y'all. Get this. Part of loving the Most High is fearing Him. (laughs) You can't have one without the other. It is my belief that if you really truly love the Most High, you're going to fear Him automatically. Because the fear I'm talking about is reverence, knowing who He is and what He's capable of. Knowing the position that He holds over mankind. Knowing the position that He holds over you. See, a person who who simply thinks that they fear the Most High, but yet they are living their lives any kind of way, they really don't fear Him. It's just words. Don't be stuck on nobody's words. You shall know them by their fruits. The fruit of a person's life is going to testify of their relationship with the Most High. And I'm not talking about the things which a man or a woman possesses. Too many times people get that confused. They believe that a person's life consists in the abundance of things which they possess. But that is not how you measure a man. That is not the measure of a man, the things that they possess, because you can't take any of it with you. Are y'all hearing me, daughters of Zion? It is very important, especially at this stage of the game, we are entering into a phase of life that is getting more and more detrimental, both in the natural and the spiritual. And if you do not open your spiritual eyes, you will be blindsided, both in the natural and the spiritual. If you do not get your heart right and get your sights set on the Most High Yah, you will be naturally and spiritually destroyed because you will allow certain circumstances to enter into your life because of bad decisions that you made based on a carnal comprehension of a situation. 
We must be moved by spiritual things, not by natural things. The spiritual will lead you and guide you through the natural. Understanding the purpose for which the Most High has set forth in your life. Not allowing yourself to be tricked and deceived by pernicious men who do not fear the Most High Yah. So you need to begin to ask yourself this question. If you are dealing with a man or if a man is pursuing you or a man is interested in you, if it is not clear and obvious to you that this man loves the Most High, you need to keep it moving. <clears throat> if you are not sure, if you see red flags waving, flaming up, get far away from him. Don't take the risk. Don't take the chance. Now, for those of you who are trying to give yourself a way to still deal with a man who you know ain't right, don't sit up there and con convince your own self that you are obligated to give someone a chance. I'm not supposed to judge him. I'm supposed to give him a chance. A at least I can pray for him that the Most High can open up his eyes. But see, a lot of times what a woman will do is she will enter into that relationship first and then start the prayer fest. Now, before you even get into a relationship with any type of man, any man, you don't get into the relationship first, then pray. That's not how it works. You pray first for a direction to see if this even if this is even the man that you are supposed to deal with. Save yourself a lot of heartache, a lot of pain and suffering, a lot of mental torture. Some women are entering into relationships with men who will bed them down, give them a nice time in bed. But above and beyond that, he has nothing else for them. No love. No instruction, no headship, no companionship, no relationship, no protection. All you are to him is a sperm dump. And I've said this before that some women allow themselves to be merely a sperm dump to a man. Not realizing that the joys of sin only last a season and that season just ain't worthwhile. Don't allow yourself to enter into those types of fruitless, godless relationships. You owe it to yourself and to any children that you would have to make sure that the man that you are going to live your life with is someone who loves and reveres the Most High Yah, our Creator. Not no religious zealot no loud mouth preacher, no Hebrew Israelite, Bible thumping, Torah observant, only through lip but not through deed. This is why the Most High said, "Is those of you who boast of the Torah, he said, it's because of you. The word of the Most High Yah said, those of you who boast of the Torah is because of you that the name of the Most High Yahuwah is blasphemed among the Gentiles. Those of you who boast of the Torah, meaning, oh, you say, I follow the law. I observe the Torah. I'm the Torah. The Torah. I, you do all of this, but you are causing the name of the Most High Yah, the, the name of the Most High Yah to be blasphemed among the Gentiles because you really don't live by the Torah. You don't love your brothers and sisters. You don't uphold the laws of Yah. You only uphold those things that are pleasing to you. How to dress. When to observe the feast days and things of that nature. But how to deal with your brethren. How to deal with the sisters. How to love the Most High. How to reverence the Most High. How to serve the Most High. You don't do those things. You boast of the Torah. But the Torah is not in your heart. It's not written in your heart. That's why you need those fringes to remind you. But even with the fringes on, you are still breaking the laws of the Most High Yah. 
still living a wicked, pernicious lifestyle right before everyone, causing the name of Yahuwah to be blasphemed among the Gentiles. Daughters of Zion, leave that kind of man alone. Get far away from him. Don't allow yourself to be classified as a silly woman laden with sin because you have allowed some loudmouth brute beast to creep in your house and lead you captive because he said just the right words but you ignored every other red flag dealing with that man another thing that I want to say to the daughters of Zion don't determine whether or not a man loves the Most High because he says it that ain't enough him telling you he loves the Most High is not enough We've got to do better than that. In order to get to that right place in the Most High, you've got to pray for the spirit of discernment. You have to lay aside every weight and sin that do have so easily beset us, even your own carnal mind that will convince you that a wicked man is a man of the Most High Yah because you desire companionship. Pray and ask that you will be in your right spiritual mind and natural mind to make the right determination, a righteous determination before entering into a relationship with anyone. Make sure that you too yourself are found within right standing of the Most High Yah, that no one can lay a charge of wickedness at you. Now folk can lay a false charge all day long, but blessed are ye when men shall revile you and say all manner of evil against you. For my sake, the Most High is going to give you the victory. The story of Susanna is a good example of that. How you can have people lie on you, but the Most High is going to give you the victory in the end. The shame is going to be brought on them. You see, make sure that you are one who is living right before the Most High. And that you are in a constant state of repentance for the things you known and unknown. So no one can lay a charge on you. An unrighteous charge. Again, you can't stop people from lying. That's between them and the Most High. Because when you say this to the Most High, when a person has laid a bogus charge on you, when you say, may the Most High judge between me and you, that person is in trouble. The Most High will then activate judgment in the proper direction for the person who has wronged the other. So I am done with this for now. This, of course, is a subject that is ongoing when you're talking to the Daughters of Zion about relationship. It's something that you have to visit from time to time and give those reminders <clears throat> of what it is we must do. Because there are mandates laid upon us or placed upon us as well as the daughters of Zion. Mandates that we must adhere to. One of the biggest of all is that we are to pray, cry, weep, and moan for our men. Because there is a spirit of judgment that has gone out after them. And it continues to this day. Um, anyway, Shabbat Shalom to those of you under the sound of my voice. Take heed to the words that I have spoken today. Make sure that your anchor holds and grips a solid rock. With that, I'll say, Shalom. <laughs>